Chugach Mountains of Alaska have been a proving ground for mankind for thousands of years. Its wild, primitive landscape of coastal islands blended with rugged mountain terrain inspire progression for all those who choose to adapt to life here. This bond, well, it can't be broke. You drink it, you fish it, you ride it, you live it. You out it from the sun just to keep it cold out. We go taking it for granted, but all across the planet, well, it's age two. This extreme environment of Alaska demands a higher level of protocol and turns out to be more practical, more useful for uh, everybody. Dean Cummings has been guiding in the Chugach for 24 years, refining the protocols needed to access this remote terrain. It all starts with looking at the big picture, weather, terrain, snow conditions, and group dynamics. We have a responsibility to develop a forecast for the region we're visiting and choose the best routes based on the conditions. Dean's mission since arriving in Alaska in the early 90s has been to share the incredible interconnected range and the protocols to minimize the risk for all those involved. Nowhere had anybody been guiding and skiing and filming and accessing mountains with so many separate glaciers and so much snowpack. It was so big, so extreme. I can't get enough. Drink it, we fish it, we ride it, we live it. We hide it from the sun just to keep it cold. People taking it for granted, but all across the planet, well, it's age two. Oh. In more recent years, Dean has been knocking off legendary first descents to show what's possible when using proper terrain management protocols. My biggest concerns on meteorite was the summit, getting off the summit. It's a hanging snowfield above this huge fracture. It's a no-fall zone, and so your biggest concern is um, making sure a small pocket or your slough doesn't sweep you over the the ice cliff where the fracture line is you got to thread the needle to get down to the spine on the dragon's back and that was the most humbling part Once I got onto the spine, it was incredible. And I was coming up to the next most critical part of the descent, which was the prow. The right sides, like 2,000 feet of cliffs and strewn rock. It's, it's a place if you fell, you would not survive. And the visual was out of this world, distracting. I definitely saw the beauty in it more than anything else. And so I just, Kept, kept on skiing and enjoying all this energy around me. The first time I laid my eyes on the tusk was in 1991 and it invoked, is this skiable? Is something like that skiable? And that's what Alaska was all about when we first got here, was seeing things that looked possible but you weren't sure if they were. My biggest concerns on the tusk was how loose and how sharp the rock is and it was a 400 foot rappel. 
I was very concerned that the rope would get hung up in the rocks. And as I went down, I had to make sure that I didn't dislodge a rock that would possibly hit me, knock me unconscious, or injure me. The unsupported slope at the top was 60 degrees, and I had to mitigate through the rocks and a double fall line. Once I got on the main face, my main concern was just my slough, so I skied the spine, which allowed my slough to run to the right and left of me so it would avoid me. After getting off the center spine, I was on the face of the tusk and it was like it was like washboard. It was this fluted curtain and I had to punch through each flute as I made my turns. So we're gonna go out and film some lifelong endeavors. We're gonna head out about 40 miles east of here to a mountain that's been named Godzilla. There's this face on this really beautiful face that I've been looking at for the last 15 years. Godzilla is glaciated from the top to bottom. My biggest concerns are the birch runs, seracs, crevasses, and all of these things create unsupported slopes. Five seconds. Good weather, snow stability, and timing has allowed Dean the opportunity to tackle this first descent. The convex was like a bowling ball. I couldn't see the face below, but I knew I had to line up on the left side so I could get on the small spine and then work to my right to avoid my slough. The hazards on the first part of this descent involve navigating a massive ice serac, birch runs, and skiing above a 1,000 foot ice fall exposure. Using a high point, Dean avoids his slough, which is a loose snow avalanche. I needed to line up above the small spine so I could work right to avoid my slough so I wouldn't get swept over the huge ice serac below. In a critical move, Dean clears the double Burks run safely, allowing a safe exit, avoiding the ice fall. Dropping into the second pitch, Dean skis high point to high point, or apex to apex. The second phase was exposed getting onto it, but the snow was incredible. First spine ended, exposing me to my slough, so I had to wait before I could move above the cliff to a flute leading me onto the lower main face. With daylight fading, Dean makes time to the pickup zone. The entire run is glaciated and strung with crevasses. With two difficult shruns below, Dean can't let his guard down. So it's just amazing to see you know, all of us get in the moment and get so into what we've committed our lives to. If it's not photography or skiing or mountaineering, it's just combining all of our skills together is what makes it so rewarding and so makes it happen, makes it come together and just so amazingly rewarding. Just such a such an incredible experience. Far from the highway, where the Schwann Glacier forks apart, lies the hourglass. 
long standing on Dean's to-do list, the day has arrived to give it a go. The hourglass is 2,800 vertical feet, 50 degrees sustain the whole way. Beautiful mountain. So amazing that snow can stick to something so steep. All right, they win. The entrance to the slope is a firm 60 degrees. Every turn is planned carefully. The conditions at the top were wind affected and made it very technical working down to that spine. It was really important to line up above that spine in case a pocket released or if my slough got the best of me that I could actually run to it and then the snow would part around me. Skiing safe zone to safe zone is a key way to minimize the risk of getting caught in an avalanche and avoiding hazardous terrain. Getting onto the well back was nice. I didn't have to work so hard to get my edges to control the slope. There was a little bit of a breather before the next pitch. The last spine was exposed and it was incredible snow though, it was so worth it watching my slough fall to either side. Getting back out onto the face above the birch run, the snow was horrible. Was such difficult conditions. The last thing I wanted to do was take a fall above the birch run. Just a few miles out of the town of Valdez, Mount Francis stands as an icon of big mountain descents. Mount Francis is an incredible mountain. It's uh, something I can see out my window the, from the living room. When I'm coaching my son at baseball, it sits at right above the baseball field. We're rigging up the aircraft to do an aerial shot of uh, Mount Francis. We're going to uh, fly up and take a look at it and see if, um, if it's doable from the top. I've been looking at it for 22 years. I've looked at it uh, two times up close, and both times there were reasons why I didn't do it. And if it looks like uh, it's all there as far as the pieces of the puzzle, snow and mental, and the whole physical side of it, depending how my body feels when I'm in this heli, I may, I may not step out of this thing. A descent down Mount Francis calls for perfect conditions and nerves of steel. A large ramp is guarded by an 80-foot cliff drop and hung over a 300-foot cliff exposure. Leaving the summit of Mount Francis takes 100% commitment. Top of Francis. I've attempted it multiple times. I went in there um, with film crews and decided it wasn't a go. I've climbed up it, looked at it, decided it wasn't a go, but this year, it was perfect. It was the year to do it. Everything was coming together, and so I had to go check it out. The jump ahead is challenging, and Dean knows he has a 50% chance of sticking the landing, given the steep takeoff. Cowboy. 
when I landed, it was wild. It was like time stood still. I did one big tomahawking flip and realized one of my skis came off. The second flip, I was just looking for my ski to see if I could grab it in the air. The last thing I wanted to do was lose equipment on this huge, massive face. And I just knew that even on the perfect day, physically, mentally, snow conditions, weather, um, snowpack, that when I got that chance, how does a guy release off a 70 degree slope and jump 80 feet and land on a 50 degree slope? No matter how much risk you're willing to take in life or you know, using these big descents to get people's attention for sharing these protocols, that's the mission. Um, still, you know, you gotta take in consideration when things go wrong, how bad can they really go? And does the risk outweigh the reward? But in this case, they were worth it. The upper turns on the face of Mount Francis were like velvet. It was incredible. I don't know, when you're just doing stuff that hard and that difficult, sometimes you just, you know, you got 90% chance of, of not making it. It's just one of those out of the box lines where it's just so hard to get. If you try hard and live hard, a lot of times you, you live lucky. And um, in this case, I was lucky in, in the sense that I didn't go off that next 400 foot cliff. But, you know, I would, I would question something of this magnitude ever again in my life just um, before I did anything like that again. Or I'm not sure I would take that big a risk again. We have this amazing thing in common, and that's living the steep life. Steep life is the health we get from it, the friendships we get from it, protecting the environment and our safety. The steep life is about the risk we take as humans who are committed to getting in touch with nature and ultimately the protocols that help keep us safe, allowing us that sweet privilege. It's the privilege of living in the moment, filling your lungs with fresh air, filling your heart pounding, blowing your mind with visuals, hearing the sounds of nature, getting after it, loving it, benefiting from it, and recognizing we need to give back to protect and respect it. The Chugach is legendary and continues to inspire us in countless ways. These mountains are a steadfast reminder to weigh the risks and rewards for every endeavor. Listen to the mountains and the responsibilities of your life. Ultimately, leave nothing but tracks.